our engagement in the Rio process is um, in, in several domains. One is that we are supporting the Ban Ki-moon high-level panel on global sustainability with its scenario work and, and some of the inputs on ecosystem regime shifts and, and understanding nonlinear dynamics in the Earth system. And, and this is a work which hopefully will also result in, in, in one of the major inputs to the Rio process equivalent to the Brundtland Commission in 1992. Then we have also taken the initiative to support the UN process in, in the area of energy. And that is a work that we're doing in, in a broad collaborative mode, not least with partners in, in Brazil and, and in Europe, together with PBL and WRI and EASA and others, on looking at energy access for all based on sustainable energy resources. But then we're also doing a follow-up on, on one of the key areas which I hope will be at central stage in Rio, namely to, to recognize that in 1992, even though we made major progress on defining sustainable development, it was still largely about minimizing environmental impacts within sectors and within the nation state. Now we have so much scientific evidence to suggest that we have entered the global scale of environmental challenges. We are uh, potentially in a new geological epoch, the Anthropocene, where humanity constitutes a geological force at the global scale. And, and this requires from Rio 2012 to start addressing the challenge of meeting sustainable targets at the global level. So really collaborating among all countries to meet sustainability targets. We frame this as, <clears throat> as a challenge of, of a future for humanity within safe planetary boundaries. But we're also seeing that uh, the Colombian government has taken initiative to define sustainable development goals. And we're supporting that process as, as one key priority, which, which I believe could be uh, a breakthrough in, in Rio next year. When it comes to, to, to expectations on next year, I, I certainly share <coughs> the, the concern that many have that um, so far there doesn't seem to be very many interesting ideas on the table in terms of what, what the world um, can gather around. But I, I have a perhaps a slightly different take, namely when the world meets in Rio next year, they will have to, world leaders will have to start by recognizing that we have failed. We've not met our promises in the Rio Conventions and we've not met the, the, the commitments we've made in the Millennium Development Goals. And therefore, we will start next year with, with a negative, namely a deep concern that we're moving in the wrong direction. Now that kind of crisis could actually be the release point for new ideas and, and innovation. So I, I, I foresee surprise in Rio next year that in fact uh, the world cannot allow itself to meet again without having some interesting outputs. I think it will simply be too embarrassing for world leaders not to take a major headway. And science is now so, so robust and so strong in, in supporting policy for a major transition towards global sustainability that we could, for example, foresee uh, some major progress when it comes to integrating the climate agenda with biodiversity, poverty and development. We could see a breakthrough in terms of defining global sustainable development goals to complement the Millennium Development Goals, which would be tremendously important because so far the, the discourse on sustainable development has been too closely linked to only poverty, as if it was only poor countries in the world that have to address sustainability, when in fact we know that affluence and the rich countries have to do much, much more, much faster than all other nations. So, so I, I wouldn't exclude positive surprise in Rio next year. Finally, I think one of the critical challenges will be to once and for all kill the notion that it's either environmental sustainability or economic growth. That we have to come to a, a, a global consensus that sustainability is a basis for economic growth, that, that there's no dichotomy between these two. And again, I think we're so close to that and that we can achieve that next, uh, next year in Rio. Interesting in what you say. Um, you think about governance in a particular way. You, you think, can you tell me a bit more about 
who you see operating towards that uh, new era. Uh, I mean, it might be a statement uh, of, of a world community of political leaders, but they can't act. Uh, they are not united as such. I mean, what sense do you have of who are the agents of change that might actually help mm. us stay within these planetary boundaries? Mm. Well, I mean, to begin with, uh, we need to move towards a, a, um, a mind shift or a new world order, which we don't have today, which is that every nation state ma must recognize that it is totally dependent on all other nation states. So, uh, for example, we have increasing evidence to suggest that global sustainability is today a prerequisite for national economic growth or for poverty alleviation, which of course is a totally new agenda. So that means that first you need a mind shift to be able to um, collaborate in, in real terms above the nation state. Secondly, I think we, we therefore need much, much stronger global governance. Um, I think it's an exciting idea of upgrading UNEP into a World Environment Organization and to give that teeth to be the agency in the world that monitors, verifies and requires reporting from all nations of how are we in the progress towards meeting global sustainability targets. But then, um, on, on your question of, of how can, who could be the agents of change? Well, I, I, I think you could see two categories of, of agents of change here. First is, is the old industrial countries, such as countries in the European Union, who are coming so close to the point where they can prove that you can have positive economic growth while still meeting sustainability targets, that there is this interesting opportunity of decoupling between negative environmental impacts and economic growth. But secondly, I, I, I see that many of the emerging economies, the, the economies in transition, particularly in Asia, are, so to say, beyond the debate whether we have environmental problems. And they're beyond the debate whether it's either environment or development. They're seeing opportunities in the green economy and moving very rapidly into those new markets on energy, on food production, on consumer goods, on transport. And of course, that might become an innovation-driven region or coalition of countries that simply say, look here, we, we cannot see any other future for humanity than a future based on a sustainable world, which is then the basis for economic prosperity. Now, my nervousness there is just that it might take too long time before we really see that happen at the full global scale. And because we know that we need to bend the curves of negative environmental change this decade, on climate, late as 2015, bending the curve of, of emissions of greenhouse gases. And, and because things have to happen so fast, I think Rio next year must start saying, well, you know, we want to support bottom-up innovation, we want to support nations and, and respect sovereignty of nations. But at the same time, we must admit that we are at a global crisis point, and we therefore need to agree on certain goals which are tangible and short-term and long-term because all nations must now move simultaneously in the right direction. So somehow you need to connect stronger global governance with regional governance, with nations and communities and, and do that very rapidly in an unprecedented pace. And is there one sort of outcome that is a prerequis prerequisite for this uh, bending the curve to, uh, to, to happen? I mean, is there one outcome that you need from Rio uh, for it to be a success? Well, I think the, the upgrading of UNIT to a World Environment Organization would be one such prerequisite, or, or at least coming to a point where you say, we recognize that um, we as nation states in the world need to collaborate in a way where we hand over and, and, and authorize, just like we do with the World Health Organization, just like we do with the World Trade Organization, certain powers at the global scale when it comes to meeting sustainability targets. I think that would be an absolute prerequisite. But then secondly, you need finance, you need uh, sharing of intellectual property rights. You need to do everything that is now so difficult in the climate negotiations or in the negotiations in biodiversity. And that has to be released across all areas, uh, which means that one interesting um, prerequisite, I think, for, for Rio next year would be to recognize that, you know, we, we cannot allow 
the climate convention to live its own life and the biodiversity convention to live its own life and the poverty agenda to live its own life. We need to simply recognize that a stable climate is now the only way to alleviate poverty. Biodiversity con conservation cannot occur unless the climate convention succeeds and vice versa because biodiversity is such a sink of carbon that if you don't have sustainable ecosystems you'll start releasing carbon instead of sequestering carbon. So there is this need to start recognizing that even though you need work to be done in different sectors, no doubt, you need an integration of, of some of these conventions as well. And that would be an interesting output as well. Thank you.